Welcome back to the Myth Series in Depth. This mission is a very unique one as we will be fighting against the Bray Unur and their wolves in the Ermine Forest, and this is the only mission that we will face off against them. This mission can be a bit challenging just because you have to deal with enemies you are not used to. Before we talk about these special units, let's get into the story and start off with a journal for this mission. Two weeks have passed since we took the castle at White Falls back from the dark. Sunday, November 30th, the Ermine. After the Great War, the armies of the Dark collapsed and the fallen lords were swallowed up by history. We believed we had entered a golden age, a new era of peace, and our armies laid down their weapons to begin the long task of rebuilding the world. For 60 years, we worked our fields and tended our cattle and did all the things that we had fought to defend until the war became something that fathers told their sons and grandfathers their grandchildren. But 60 years is nothing to the likes of a fallen lord. And while King Ulrich was restoring the province to its former glory, Soulblighter was plotting its infinite ruin. The king has decided to fight fire with fire. He seeks Myrdred, an avatar of the Wolf Age, whom Balor renamed the Deceiver after bending him to his will. Although the Deceiver fought alongside Balor during the last war, he held no great love for the rest of the Fallen, nearly being killed by the Watcher in a legendary battle at Seven Gates. King Ulrich believes the Deceiver still lives, and is counting on this old rivalry to lure him into joining our efforts to destroy Soulblighter and the Myrcridia. The King has sent word to Twelve Motion Jewel Skull, a journeyman who served under him during his campaigns east of the Cloudspine, in hopes that he has some knowledge of what became of the Deceiver after Balor's destruction. A select group of men from the Legion, myself included, has been sent to rendezvous with Twelve Motion at the Stair of Grief. We have decided to go through the Ermine, the homeland of our fur bog allies. Though the forest seems to be a continuous thicket, we have made good time. Night has fallen, and we have pitched our camp. Time to pick the brambles out of my bootlaces, and then to sleep. At dawn, we begin our march anew. There is a journal image showing some farmers working with a windmill in the background. Once again, Bungie is showing off their fancy windmill with fully 3D moving parts. There is another image showing a family of farmers with their mother holding a baby. They have no care in the world, but little do they know that Soulblighter was planning their demise the 60 years that he was gone. There is another journal image showing Soulblighter's crows on a fence along a trail. Soulblighter has been keeping an eye on what has been happening in the province as he raised his army. There is a journal image showing the deceiver who Ulrich seeks to aid him against Soulblighter. The journal reveals that the deceiver's real name is Myrdred and that he was an avatar of the Wolf Age. Balor had named him the deceiver after bending him to his will. Myth 3 The Wolf Age will reveal why Balor would have chosen this name for him. As with most of the Fallen Lords, Midrid once served under the light as an avatar. The only reason he served the dark was because Balor bent him to his will. So since Balor is now dead, Ulrich believes that he can get him to help them out. In Myth the Fallen Lords, the Watcher defeated the Deceiver, but apparently Ulrich knows that he is still alive. There is a journal image showing a group of the Legion that would be going to catch up with 12 motion jeweled skull at the Stara Grief to find out more about what happened to the Deceiver. This journeyman might have been the one who was in the intro cutscene for Myth the Fallen Lords, since the journal says that he served under Ulrich during the Great War. The game doesn't say anything about him besides in this mission and in the next. Apparently the Legion has decided to travel through the Ermine, which is the homeland of the Fur Bolk. They are probably going this route in order to save time, as this is the most direct route to the Stair of Grief. During the night is where the trouble starts as Legion runs into the new units in this mission, and this mission only, the Bray Unur and their wolves. The Soulblighter Manual tells us that the Bray Unur are the aboriginal inhabitants of the Ermine, and that they are violent and a secretive race. They are the main enemy of the Furbolg and have sparred with them for centuries. Tales say that they are both cunning and ferocious. One of their flavor texts speak of their skill in combat. 
If this is who the Furbolg have been honing their martial skills on since time before memory, it is no wonder they are so good, nor that they would depart to keep their kingdom. The Bray Unar worship a god called Bailego. They believe that he is a god of the air, and that he is strengthened by the escaping breaths of those they sacrifice, and that he will one day grow powerful enough to spirit away their enemies. They use the bones of the largest sacrifices as weapons, as they use in both melee combat and to throw at their enemies. Tales say that their vile deity has given them the ability to command wolves. They have a flavor text that speaks of this deity that they worship. Little is known of the Bray Unar, a furball word referring to the various head cults of the Ermine, aside from their fanatical devotion to the profane elemental spirit by Lego. The Bray Unar are effective as ranged units, although the range is shorter than a bowman. They are much harder to dodge than the Solish, which can make them a major pain to fight from range. The Bray Unar have a moderate amount of health so a little bit more than one grenade will defeat them. In general though, they are not very effective in combat. The good news is they don't throw their bones at an arc, so they can't throw anything if they are behind each other. So the most effective way to kill them is to get them bunched up, rush them with warriors, or hit them with doors while they are grouped. If all we had to deal with were the Bray Unar themselves, this mission would not be very difficult. But when you combine them with their wolves, they can be a major pain. This is because the wolves are fast and can deal damage fairly quickly in combat. Their main weakness is that they don't have much vitality and thus can be killed very quickly. A well placed grenade can end a large group of wolves though. The wolves have a couple of their own flavor texts. The wolves of the Ermine have been a menace to the people of the free cities of the north, since the area was settled in the Axe Age. Wolves feared for centuries as man-eaters and killers of livestock, used to great effect by the Furbolg during their time of conflict with them. If the wolves served the Bray Unar because of their god, then what caused them to help the Furbolg in their past conflicts with the free cities of the north? I don't have a good answer for this one, so let me know if you got any ideas. Perhaps the Furbolg have a god of their own that gives them a similar power. This mission has bats out in the wild that we have not seen before. Unless you count the bats that flew out of the caves in silver mines. Unfortunately, Mythifallen Lords and Soulblighter don't have any funny flavor text for us, but Myth 3 the Wolf Age does have something for us. When asked about their preference to sleep upside down, and of their animosity toward the mice, all were silent. After a time, the eldest among them looked down and seemed to squeak. It was they who poisoned the soul of gravity. In reality, bats really aren't similar to mice, as this joke seems to apply, if I'm understanding their intent correctly. If you don't get the joke, this is a play on words making fun of the forest giant's flavor text in Myth the Fallen Lords. When asked of their source of their animosity towards the trowel, all were silent. After a time, the eldest among them looked down and seemed to weep. It was they who poisoned the soul of Iron. Now that you know about the new units in the mission, let's get this thing rolling. Survive a night in the hostile forest. So, we start wake up in the night, or I don't know, they're keeping watch at the night or whatever. But anyways, they're going to have a little conversation about the Bray Unar and the wolves over here to start the mission. So, here we go. Wasn't the deceiver killed at the end of the Great War? Aye, but he's a fallen lord after all. Hey, what's going on over there? <laughs> I'm just kind of worshipping their god by Lego. Alright, so let's set, get our presets set. Yes. Let's send our units forward. Okay. Okay, we're gonna send these guys off to the side rather than straight ahead so our archers and dwarves can get a couple hits in. Let's go! Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, let's just go ahead and go in. Yes! We'll do it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the next group. Okay. So before we come over here, there's multiple routes you can go. There's one route here, another route over here, another route over here, and then this route over here, which is where I'm going towards right now. So there's four routes. So basically, you have to defend from so many waves of fur bulk and wolves. They'll each come from different ways. The first wave comes from this way, and that's the only way that comes down here. So if we come down and meet them, and they come down here, this is like a area that you can defend easily, much more easier than anywhere else. Because if you try to defend the campfire, you're going to get surrounded. It's definitely doable, but it's much more difficult than just coming down here. So that's what we're going to do. And the level is pretty much it pretty much seems like it was designed to be defended from down here like just because the first wave comes from over there and because yeah because there's uh, also some magic roots down there as we'll show you yeah yeah Oh, that was such a good throw. So we kind of have to rush down here because the first group is going to get here fast. Someone said in my last video I don't save enough. And I can see what he means because in um, landing at White Falls I had like gotten all the way across the beach. And then I lost the unit and I had to redo the whole thing. <laughs> so I'm sure that's what he was talking about. So, uh, what you want to do is it's best to, like, tell your dwarves where to attack to get these, uh, wolves. It's like the most effective way to get them. Okay, we're going to send one of these, um, journeymen down here. So there's all these mandrake roots. So we're going to keep one journeyman down there at a time. Um, this was the first group that comes, so the third group is going to be much larger. So we're going to save our satchels for that group. Um, and you have plenty of heals. So notice I'm kind of defending down here. So if they come from this way, they kind of funnel them in a straight line. And they come from this way, they have to loop around here and then come down. So that kind of funnels them in a straight line. Um, you could also defend over here or whatever. It doesn't really matter, but... I I seem I kind of like over here the best. So, and you noticed also I can put my um my berserks kind of close. That way when the wolves come down, they're not like if I put my berserks over here, they'll like spread out. If I keep them close, the um, wolves will stay kind of jumbled together. So we can save it, and then we'll save it again when the next group comes down. We're just gonna collect some mandrakes. Right, he's full. So we'll send him up here and we'll send the other journeyman down to go get some mandrakes. We'll do that for a bit. We'll send them back and forth. Okay, here comes the next groups of wolves and Brayuner. We'll have to face like about seven groups like this, except for the third one. Will be two groups. Okay, that's good. The next one's the third one, so we gotta hustle up and place some satchels. Um, we're gonna. What we're gonna try to do is not use the satchels on the wolves. We're gonna try to use them on the Bray and Well, not the first group of wolves, anyways. Okay. 
Make up your mind. Okay. Yes, sir. Make up your mind. Okay, our journeymen are basically full. We'll just send them down to grab this mandrake for the heck of it. We don't need. We don't really need two um, journeymen up here. Let's just hustle till the group comes here. Till the group shows up. Okay, so what we don't want to do is waste all these satchels on these wolves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna back up a little bit. So that we can blow up right here. Okay, so we killed pretty much everything, but then there's more wolves and more Bray in there still. We're just gonna do some dodging and then blow those brain up and we're good. We'll do it. And then yes. don't kill my door. No! That worked out so well, but <laughs> let's try again. Try again. It was going so well except for that very end. Let's get this journeyman to go heal this guy right now. Move here, move there. Yeah. Burn. Yes. Oh yeah. Move here, move there. Mic up your mind. Oh, the heal didn't count. Man, I gotta do that one more time. Mic up your mind. Heal didn't get off. Yes. I need to um. That last send our um, barbarians this time rather than screwing up again. Yes. Oh, a couple of our satchels didn't go off. What do you know? Okay. Alright, we survived that group. It took I thought it was gonna get the first time and it ended up taking me a few times. And one thing you don't want to do is be cautious with using mandrakes. You get so many of them. Like I'm already through the hardest part. Another thing you can do at that big group is place a bunch of uh um Use a bunch of your fire arrows to congest the area. Moving. Oh, here they come. Do 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 do. Okay. Move here, move there. Mic up your mind. Okay. There's another group just a little bit behind them. All right. Yeah. 
Okay, we're we're dominating them. So let's um get this mandrake root. Send it back up. Let's. I know this dwarf isn't hurt that much, but those bones will kill him, as you saw. Let's let's just go ahead and heal everybody. Heal them up good, because we got more Mandrake Roots than we could ever possibly use with how well we're doing right now. I'm moving. Here they come. Come on. We're waiting. Any moment now. There they are. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Get him. It's nice to get our berserk some kills anyways. Let's go. Ah, no, why did you do that? Just so we can use some mandrake roots, I guess. got plenty of them, we might as well use them. We can pretty much just use our berserks to kill everything now because we're doing so well. You know what, just for the heck of it, I'm probably going to use a bunch of fire arrows here. Just for the heck of it. I know it's not smart to put all the fire arrows in one spot. It's pretty much pointless, but... Get him. That was the last group. Yep. That's how you do that. Had to reload a couple times. Basically, that one third group is like the hardest part by far. So, our dwarf has 255 kills. He's maxed out already. And we did pretty well. Damage ratio 12 to 1, that's pretty good. And our Berserks got a lot of kills, which is good. The windscreen shows the Berserks and Bowmen in the forest walking towards the mountain with the sun up indicating that they survived the night. We can see a dead Bray Uner on the ground. The lost screen shows the Bray Uner sacrificing the Legion to their god Bilego. He looks like a pretty evil god. Something you probably never noticed about the shrine is that his face will change when you start the mission and at the end of the mission. At the very start of the mission, he has his typical angry face for a short bit, and then it changes to a closed mouth while the conversation is going on at the campfire. After they see the Bray Uner and they shriek in the night, the statue changes to a very angry face. This face remains until the end of the mission when you kill the last wave. At that time, the face will go in reverse back to the face that it started with at the beginning of the mission. If you taunt within the shrine or blow up the sacrificed deer, you will hear a loud moan, and then all of the waves of enemies will come charging in at you simultaneously. This is a very dangerous situation, as you will quickly be surrounded, and can't funnel them into a more manageable path. Now there is a glitch within the scripting for this mission, where if you are able to taunt within the shrine early enough in the mission, 
you will automatically win the level. The easiest way to do this is to select the closest berserk while they are having the conversation and then immediately send him over as soon as you see that you gain control of the unit on the map. You will have to do this while you don't have control of the camera otherwise you will not get there in time. This glitch makes me think that the mission wasn't completely finished or as polished as a level editor would have liked and there are some geometries in the tags that are not used that support the idea. These geometries have no images on them. One is called Worshipping Monument. Another is called a Path Marker. The third is called a Hidden Godhead. Makes you wonder what kind of ideas Bungie had for this map. There is a dialogue in the scripting of tag files that does not occur within the mission. Ask for forgiveness. But I didn't see it until it was too late. Don't complain that it was so small as it to be in danger of being trod on by a dwarf. Perhaps the dwarf was going to do something that would make the Bray Uner upset, but this was scrapped for the dialogue that we now get at the start of the mission. Or perhaps this was used to be a dialogue that would occur if you stepped with the dwarf near the shrine on previous versions of the map. We will never know. Well that is it for this mission. I will see you next time for Steroid Grief. But feel free to stick around and watch a film of me angering at the Bray Uner God by Lego. Wasn't the Deceiver killed at the end of the Great War? Aye, but he's a fallen lord after all. Hey, what's going on over there?